Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, found this comic, Living the Line, uh, I guess, comic company. I don't know uh, who they are, but I saw this, The Abolition of Man. Now, you remember uh, I had mentioned uh, C.S. Lewis's The Abolition of Man in a video back during the uh, the dawn of the, uh, the PSYOP, right? Uh, I saw this comic. I said, okay, uh, for some reason, that title caught me. And then when I looked inside, it looked... Biz like interesting, kind of like uh, a mix of the the analog horror graphics and some of the uh, some like I would say the uh, modernism, right? The the creepy, weird, uh, you know, Francis Bacon type, you know, uh, bizarre modern art kind of. Style that I, yours truly, a uh, traditionalist, <laughs> uh, semi traditionalist, I guess, in some ways. I actually liked modernism. I saw this and I thought this was visually interesting. Okay, also the fact that this is apparently um, the, this philosopher here, Luciano Floridi. Okay. Uh, he's a, I believe he's the uh, Italian man living in uh, the UK. A philosopher basically dealing with, uh, like, look at that. Look, at that. look how cool that is, how, how atmospheric, like, charcoal, right? Uh, but getting back to the whole thing, he's basically a, a philosopher, a digital ethics philosopher, amongst other things. Now, uh, so we have the whole idea looking at the artist. And here, and here, there's a little catch, there's a little... Uh, twist at the end. Well, the twist I'm going to reveal to you. This is the artist here, Carson Gruba. Seems like a, a artistic type. Uh, I saw other issues of this. I didn't see the first one, which I really wanted to see because apparently it's most directed to C.S. Lewis. Uh, the Abolition of Man. His um, they, it was a, they did a, uh, a written version of his uh, lecture. One of the most brilliant, uh, prescient chilling uh, bits of work uh, written in the 20th century, in my opinion. Um, for a man coming from a, 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 an area that I'm not uh, really uh, normally a part of the Christian apologist uh, uh, sector of thought, but still an amazing abolition of man. Uh, I, I recommend you check the video out or ch just check it out in general. But... Apparently, uh, going on the afterwards here, right? Comics really are for adults now. Real adults. Well, I guess that's a, a, a nice try. <laughs> the kind of adult who exert self-control in the face of hard times. An algorithm, algo, algo, oh boy, oh boy, do algorithmi algorithmically crafted attacks on willpower. Now, essentially. In terms of digital ethics, the man here and the artist here are making the point of the problem of what? The algorithms, AI, okay? The whole digital well, lack of basically freedom, the lack of privacy, privacy as they say uh, in the old world. Um, and so they basically go throughout this comic here, right? The idea of, uh, unfortunately, bringing up... The, uh, the EU, Article 88. The expression of human dignity appears in Article 88, which indicates the rules shall include suitable and specific measures to safeguard the data subjects' human dignity, legitimate interests, and fundamental rights with particular regard to the transparency of processing. Well, shall I say processing, excuse me, the transfer of personal data within a group of undertakings or a group of enterprises engaged in a joint economic activity and monitoring systems at the workplace, right? the Council of the European Union. Now, you could see it's a whole word salad there, essentially. Uh, there's eight or, or ten of these words uh, need to be defined. Uh, what does that mean? What these things, what they mean, what is specific? Right? Dign what, the, what dignity is the whole thing here? Interests, legitimate. What is legitimate? Uh, rights, the damn rights. Hey, what are rights? You know what I think of rights. Um, joint enterprises, joint economic activity, group of enterprises. Right. So it's just essentially 
obviously Luciano has his heart in the right place. And going through here, this interesting, like I said, analog horror meets like early 20th century modernism. Right? Um, they go from, of course, the old, uh, you know, philosophies, the old ways of looking at things, right? In terms of the Greek and Roman, I suppose you should say, the pagan view, right? The Christian philosophy, right? Uh, modern philosophy, of course, uh, Kant, right, the, the immortal Kant, right? and of course, and in, in, in post-modernity, grounded on humanity, social recognition of each other's value. Now, I'm not familiar with post-modernity in terms of its philosophies. I'm, a, I'm, we're all friggin', uh, you know, acquainted with post-modernity, post-post-modernity. But essentially, Luciano is trying to basically explain, in terms of what is what. Is the basis of this human dignity that is to be protected by the powers that be? Right? P uh, play with me a little bit. Um, what is the basis of this human dignity? Since obviously the ancient, uh, the pagan, and of course the Christian things are are wrong, you know, because of you know, and the um, the Enlightenment philosophy maybe is a bit dated, and of course the post modernity. Uh, is this nihilism? Uh, but basically, here in this, he attempts to uh, define what makes humans special, what makes humans exceptional, without putting us above anything. Okay, um, I have argued elsewhere, right? Copernicus, Darwin. I like Darwin. Freud, ugh, Turing. What? In the time, once in a while, an anthrop anthropocentric approach to human exceptionalism. We are not the center of the cosmos, right? If we are special, we cannot because of such old centralities. If it's human exceptionalism is still defensible, it's probably only an eccentric version. Special will have to mean strange, okay? And this is where we're getting to the main point, which I, I think is kind of fascinating here, right? We are neither angels nor brutes or robots. I, I disagree with him, uh, but that's okay. Right, our exceptionalism lies in a special and perhaps irre irreproducible way of being successfully dysfunctional. Okay, we are nature's beautiful glitch. We are endowed with consciousness, intelligence, mental life, and self determination. We clearly should not be here. Now, this is interesting. Uh, Floridi is trying to, uh, excuse me, Luciano is trying to find a new ethics. He's trying to find a new set of values, which is ironic that he brings up, of course, uh, C.S. Lewis's uh, name for the series here, or not him, but this man here, the artist. Of course, C.S. Lewis always said that there are no new sets of values. Okay, you can't create new values. The, new, the values you think are new, there's no, no, nothing new that can be created. Okay, that hasn't been created before, and not just by Christian, Christianity. Uh, you need to have an objective set of values that cannot be touched. Uh, like I would always say akin to rules that you see in the sky that you cannot go up and change with a pen or, or a, other device. Right? Now when you talk about here, when he starts saying we are endowed, endowed with consciousness, we should not be here. We are the lucky winners in a, a universe. Lifetime lottery ticket, are we? Okay, uh, this anti-heroic interpretation of human exceptionalism, right? Well, anti-heroic right off the bat, you, you're sort of uh, cutting yourself off at the knees, in my opinion. Okay, that looks kind of look at that. It looks kind of cool, polytropos. Okay. Now, what does this sound like to me? This sounds like you're going the other direction. You t you could take this to a different, slightly different uh, uh, direction into Thomas Ligotti territory, right? Edgar Salter's territory. Uh, Schopenhauer territory, right? Human consciousness is a maladaption. It's a mistake. Okay, it is a burden. It is a curse. Okay, I always find that a very interesting way of looking at things, which I don't necessarily believe, so to speak, but it's possible. But this man is coming from a humanist angle. He's trying to solve a problem. All right, each of us. It's a beautiful glitch. It's a fragile and very pliable entity whose life is essentially made of information. That I like. That is interesting. Our, our dignity rests in being able to be masters of our own journeys and keep our identities and our choices open. 
right? Human dignity, the ground for right to privacy and individual control over our information. Now listen, man, oh, you know me. I'm for privacy, mind your damn business, okay? I'm against the powers that be, okay? Uh, so I, I, I have sympathy for this man's thoughts, okay? Uh, the problem I have is that it seems to like much... Uh, philosophy today, much thought, including dissident thought, by the way, okay, which I'm aware of, which I'm all too aware of. The idea that they, what is not understood here is power. Of course, the whole problem is the backdrop of the AI. Well, the AI, okay, now, of course, countless science fiction horror films are about AI coming to self awareness and then just, you know, doing what it wants with humanity. This is always possible. Just like this is possible that a giant squid is coming to our planet. Right? But more likely AI is just going to be a tool used as seen the abolition of man uh, by C.S. Lewis. It is just the power over science, the power of it. It's just going to be humans in power using the AI on us uh, already as they use other things on us. Okay? And the idea of the homework of being, we can care beyond our needs and drives. Caring life. Um, um, right. Harm to humanity's rational autonomy and the ability of self determination. All right. Essentially. Uh, what what world are you, uh, are you living in? Okay, for example, like this man, like like the artist here. Okay, um, he he kind of sort of puts himself down for being selfish. Okay, he wants to care. What will you start with that life? Right. Obviously, I agree with him here. I definitely agree with him here. Uh, in the face of AI, well, what can we do? You know, we we live our own lives. We live our own worlds. You live your life as you see fit. What will we do with that life? Will it be one of submission to external forces. Okay, uh, complacent consumption of mere content. Uh, will you happily be a pro-doomer to use one of Luciano's neologisms who produces more info information by consuming than through any other means of creativity? I'm all in, dude. I'm all in with that. Okay. Or will you be one who carefully, thoughtfully, unselfishly looks at the info sphere around you and chooses like a real adult to take up the responsibilities of caring? This is where you lose me. You live in a world that is a mystery, a world, a mystery upon mystery. You will never know, and you will never really know uh, many of the mysteries. What is beyond? But one thing you do know is power. Okay, and humanities. Uh, all it is is one group of people or individuals using it on other people, or using it on other individuals or groups. That's all human existence is. Okay, that you can know of. Okay, the transcendent you can't know of, and obviously the transcendent is not considered here, despite using C.S. Lewis's um, title, "The Abolition of Man." Okay, um, the humanist aspect of wanting to make a better world. Okay, trying to solve a problem. When I keep saying, uh, you don't solve these problems, which are endemic to existence. You manage them. Okay. Anyway, uh, that's really creepy looking too. What the hell is that? <laughs> so, right, not one party but politics, not any of us but society. Stop being selfish, which I argue, in some ways, is this is still the Christian element coming through. Many people do not realize, even postmodern people, that they're trying to use Christian ethics but without the, the basis of belief. Okay. So, anyway. Still interesting though. I like the crazy art in this. I, I, I thought it was definitely different comic. I'm not ripping on these dudes, right? It was just something I just wanted to look at. And what is the twist at the end? Okay, uh, this guy, Car, this uh, artist here, Carson Guba. He is an artist, right? He is. He's a. I don't know his art. I've seen his drawings. I'm not the biggest fan, but he is talented in his work. But the art here, okay, none of this was drawn. How is this art made? Okay, the art was by Mid Journey, which what well, they don't add Mid Journey AI. All the art in this was done by AI. Okay, 
Uh, needless to say, I am against the idea of AI art uh, and creativity, uh, uh, to say the least. I'm very much against that. But in this case, it was very interesting using that uh, as the, uh, the medium, the abolition of man. You have no idea what's coming later.